After the surprising popularity of the first junior developer portfolio review, it's time to come back with part two. So I posted on LinkedIn and let everyone submit their developer portfolios and that's what we're gonna go through over the next few minutes. Before we dive into the comments on this post, I'm gonna let you know that I am perfectly well hydrated. I'm also today's sponsor of this video, Mike and Ike's or at least the 10 or so Mike and Ike's that are left in the box. We are ready to go, I have the energy that I need. Let's hop into the first one, which is Rohit Nambiar, who submitted first. So let's dive into his portfolio. He says he just recently finished building it, so congratulations, Rohit. I think that's fantastic. Okay, first impressions, it is definitely grayscale, going very dark tone. I think that's cool, especially from a developer perspective. A lot of people are liking dark mode. Um, I'm gonna do this video a little bit differently than last time. I'm not just gonna go through 12 random things that I think. I'm gonna do positives and negatives for each website that I review, and hopefully that's helpful. Okay, positives. The user experience is excellent. I think he did a really good job with the color scheme. I like this cool gradient thing he's got going on. The name is slightly hard to read, um, but I think that's obviously a style choice here. It's not as easy, and it's not something that would pop into my mind if I was trying to remember this portfolio for a job interview. I like the scroll down. Obviously, it's a, kind of a lot in the minimal frame, I think, for this first part. So let's dive into this, his skills section. Okay, word cloud is an interesting way to do that. I think that's excellent. One of the things in my first part of this video, or first video that I did on this junior developer portfolio thing, was the fact that too many people put way too many skills in this section. So in this specifically, I think he did a really good job turning it into a word cloud. There are things you notice on there, things that you don't. Um, they do look clickable, but it doesn't look like you can click any of them. So. It's interesting, I think it's really cool. Um, the about section, high school student located in India. Cool, I like this. I would probably put a little bit more weight on the things that you're passionate about. So maybe use this same green that you've got going on in the word cloud over here for UI designing, Android development, web development, and automation. Um, it looks like the capitalization is a little bit off there, so that's something I would fix as well. Um, like passionate is capitalized, but UI designing, web development, and automation aren't. Not sure where the correlation there is. You have the contact me button, which just takes you to the bottom of the page. We'll come back to that though. Projects here, we've got six projects it looks like you've worked on, and you've are they named or are they the tool that you used for them? It looks like they're named. Okay, so Friday, a simple personal assistant to automate Windows made using Python, that's cool. And I'll let you view it on GitHub. Let's see what we got here. Technologies used, cool. It has your information on there, that's awesome. And I see everything here looks like it's yours, which is really important, a lot of people will just uh, fork code, it looks like, and, and it looks like this is this is great. It looks like something you built yourself, it's Python based, you can see that. Um, sometimes you'll go into like how many commits there have been, 58 commits on this project, it's fairly recent. All things are great so far, what I see about that. I could dive into the technical details, but that's not what this video is about. Diving in, I see another Python, Python, Flutter, and Dart. You've color-coded those, which is awesome. And it looks like you have a great level of experience, so really cool. Overall, I would say very well done. The only minor nitpicks that I would have on this site, I think this text, if you want people to read it, comes in really slowly, and then it's very difficult to read your name. Other than that, I think this is very well done, very simple, easy to see, easy to work with, and I think you did a very good job, so thanks, Roeth. Okay, let's dive into another personal portfolio website. The next one is Chetin. Kulog, I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing these incorrectly. Please let me know in the comment section how I'm supposed to say these things. I'm not intending to do it poorly, but I know that that's the case. Okay, diving in to see the cool loading animation. We've, ooh, I'm already distracted. Look at this. I can move it around with my mouse. It's like a little donut planet that I get to. So he looks like a, a 3D designer. I would say first thing I see on this is he's a 3D motion designer. Um, based on like the texturing and all this that I see from the website. Um, but let's see, let's see what we find out. Cool uh, little fav icon up here at the top. Um, the URL is totally fine. Using a github.io for your portfolio is absolutely fine and it's free, so I think that's great. The animations on this page are, I mean, stellar. It looks really, really good. Um, he, it looks like I'm a little planet too. My mouse is like this little this little steel ball planet thing. So, okay, we've got your name, front end web developer, cool, that's very clear from what you've done on this website. Okay, into the about section, so first thing right there is the about section, that's great. Hello, I'm Chetan from India, love web, okay, obviously you love 3D stuff, this whole website is based on fantastic 3D stuff, 3JS, cool. Uh, use my creativity for making websites cooler. Uh, looks like boilerplate text here, this isn't actually English. Um, 
I would say either remove this section completely or finish it out. Obviously, if you want people to be reading it, it does look like this website's half finished when there's text like that on here. I just love that everything moves around. I feel like I'm interacting with everything on the site now. Okay, projects. That's interesting. So when you mouse over things, it kind of messes with the orientation. Everything goes into the next line. That's not ideal. The animations are really cool. I don't mean to, to nitpick on those, but you don't want to remove usability because of, or for the sake of animations that aren't necessary. Um, these look like old projects, 2019, 2019, 2020, so at least two years old. Um, I'm trying to click on them, but every time I mouse over something, it moves into the different. Okay, that's going to be my first, uh, I would say, point of feedback is this is, is, I mean, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to click on this, but I can't click on any of them, and they just jump around too much, so. That's uh, not incredibly helpful. And I would say, let's try and get either logos or something else in for the thumbnails of these because the thumbnails do not correlate very well with this portfolio website. The design of the portfolio is fantastic. The design of these projects is not fantastic. I would say the COVID India, that, that's fairly good with the color scheme you've got going, but these two, they look uh, very low on the front end design element. So I would say, Either use a thumbnail, logo, something else for those if they're not going to have fantastic UI similar to your portfolio, especially if those are the only three that you're going to be showing on your site. Um, super basic here, let's talk, everything's jumping around again. It looks like you can input stuff, which is great. And then sending that over, what happens if I click it without anything going in there? Yep, okay, so it's a good form, that works. Social links, awesome, so you've got Stack Overflow, things like that. Stack Overflow, let's see. Member for nine months, one reputation, nice. I don't know that you need to highlight Stack Overflow on your website if uh, you don't have like a powerhouse Stack Overflow. With that being said, fantastic job. I really like this site. I think it's very well done. The animations are fantastic and that's super memorable, something that I would definitely remember. Um, just a couple of things that I would change about that, but overall, very well done. Thanks for submitting. Okay, let's dive into the next one, Arbaz Sumar. And before I give my first impressions on this, it is definitely time for a Lemonade and Mike and Ike's break. Okay, diving back into it, let's get started. First impressions are excellent. I really like the black background. I like the white text on the top. Contrast is great. Front end engineer that gets deleted. React engineer. Okay, so we're going through different things you can do. I really love this cube that talks about the different things that you do. Um, looks like we got CSS, HTML, React on the back. There's Figma, Git, and whatever else is on there. I don't, okay, JavaScript. Okay, I think let's dive into the next section. Projects. Okay, well, I think from my first video, and if you haven't seen that, I'll link it somewhere, but I talked about how I don't necessarily love clones for front-end designer um, websites, but it is what it is. I think uh, if it's really good and really well done and there's a demo on there, I think it's useful. Housing market app. Let's see what, let's see what that looks like. We got the Vercel app. I like the loading bar. Okay, so this is a great example of just a quick demo. It works. You can see different things. You can click on stuff. Um, it's, it's basic, but it's definitely a useful example of what you can do in React with your hooks and things like that. And you've got a link to the code. Excellent. I would say, in general, this is one of the better project example portfolio sections I've seen. The design of it's not fantastic, but the content itself I think is really good. I think those are great. I would reorganize these just slightly and put highlights on the ones you think are absolutely fantastic. Maybe the most recent ones, the ones that are designed the best. If I had to just guess right off the bat, I would say the space one, I would say the GitHub profile finder, the password generator. Um, those would probably be the first three that I put on there and probably the biggest. And then I would make smaller ones for all your other projects that just highlight what you've done in them. I wouldn't just smatter them around. I would say, the first ones in this section should be the best ones you have. So those are the three that I would recommend and then put the other ones maybe in smaller thumbnails so people can still see them if they want to, but your most impressive and best projects are highlighted first. Okay, jumping into technologies, we see, okay, I really like the coordination and there are quite a few words on the page right now, right here, that's probably a negative. But let's talk about the positive, the fact that technologies are organized. Okay, so front end, React and React Native, which are also kind of front end, but UI, UX, API styling, and Git. So the categories there do a really good job 
of organizing on what is a really long list of things that uh, our boss has some experience in. So even though HTML and CSS, I've talked about it, I don't necessarily like seeing those on here. Since they're organized and they're smaller text, it's a lot easier for HR or whoever's the hiring manager to look through and see, okay, well, I know I need someone who knows Bootstrap so they can look in and see styling. Okay, that makes sense. The categories, maybe maybe CSS needs to go in styling. I'm not sure if UI UX and front end and React and React Native are separate categories, but overall, I will say that the categorization tool is a good way to put a long list in a more manageable way. Going back to my first comment here, there's just way too much text going on right now, so I would put more spacing in between technologies and about me and between the sections in general. I would say they need just a little bit more space so that things aren't quite so cramped. About me, being in my journey, I've done remote work for agencies, Kindles for startup, collaborative talented people. That's a lot of good stuff. Awesome, quite the confident, naturally curious. This is really cool. I like, um, it's really short, really easy. Um, things that you like to do, who you are as a person, awesome. Very, very well done. I think that's excellent. So great job, Arbaz, I really like your site. Okay, diving in to Joseph. Joseph Simon Robinson, let's see what you've got. Okay, so first impressions here, we see Joseph Robinson. He is a website developer, um, probably need an O there, but let's dive into what he's got. This is a very, very simple landing page. I think it might be a little too simple and your name and website developer are exactly the same size of heading, and I think that might be more of a subtext, the website developer, but that might be more of a nitpick. So let's dive into what you've got. See your portfolio, oh, we skipped through the about me. About me, front-end developer, spying website developer, currently studying, going to university, enjoy experimentation. Really cool, I think this is, this is good, this is useful. You might even just, since this is short, throw that right into the, uh, right into the header here. I could go right below Joseph Robson, website developer, I think it's not too long, it won't take away from any of that, and then it simplifies your site just a little bit. Okay, diving into your projects, we have two. Okay, so it is a simple site to begin with. Student website developer, totally makes sense. Hangman game that you've built as well as your website portfolio, which I assume is this, if I click on it. Yep, it's the same thing. Let's dive back down to the website. You say XTHML, not something I've heard of, but my assumption is that you're talking about HTML there. So just some spelling things, I would definitely look into capitalizing I's, other stuff that would just be more of a nitpick, something that I would notice as a hiring manager, but is not necessarily across the board something that people care about. We see your hangman game and it has a demo. I love demos, so I'm definitely going to be testing that out. And it takes me to GitHub. So I would say that is not a demo. Um, I would host it somewhere. If you, want to, if you want to say that you're going to use a demo, I love demos. I think they're a great way to show what you've done. but asking me to download an exe and then make sure I update all my node and npm and starting it, that's not something I'm gonna do. So unfortunately I don't get to test out the fun hangman game and I would say host it somewhere if you wanna call it a demo. Otherwise just say, here's my code, you can look at it if you want to. Uh, demo again, the website, I don't know that that is a demo because it's just uh, this site itself. So super, super basic. There's not a way to contact him on the site itself, but I would say probably the download resume would be the easiest way to get a hold of you. And other than that, I think this is good. I think it's a well done website, super simple. I think there's some, the feedback points that I would give, but other than that, I think it's clean, it works, and it's simple, which are all great things to have. So if you're watching this video as a junior developer and you made it this far, first of all, thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions at all, anything that you need help with, or you want me to look at your portfolio, feel free to comment down below on this video. Subscribe to the channel because I will be continually giving tips on what makes a developer portfolio better, how you can gain your skills in tech, build business, become an entrepreneur, all those things that I love. So enjoy this journey with me and we will see you in the next video.